everybody got a quick review for you here of Tony's new switchable Jafar chip with X Blast. It's a pretty sweet little chip here. So I picked up an Xbox for 10 bucks on Marketplace. Never been opened, which really surprised me because of this. What it actually was, I found out, was two of the screws that hold the hard drive in place had come out. That's what was surprising about it never having been opened. Somehow two of them had backed out and were rattling around in there. It was pretty filthy inside. The capacitors were bulging there, of course, by the heat sink, so I got those replaced. There's the clock capacitor. It had leaked uh, significantly. There was some trace damage. So I had to go in and clean it all up, get those caps replaced. Here's the uh, kind of a close-up of the chip. Not a very well done one because I couldn't see my screen where I had the tripod sitting. But there's your switch. Pretty handy. Obviously it's going to be inside the Xbox, but that's not a problem because you're going to flash one of the two banks and leave it on that. You're going to use the switch to boot to X Blast, flip it over, flash a bank, and leave it there. That way you always have an X Blast uh, bank to boot to. So here I'm just showing off uh, where the where the uh, pins are going to go. Here's my D0. Got it grounded right there. Uh, there was some trace rot from the capacitor leaking, so I just did a jump there across the board. Tony's got some great files that are high resolution for tracking down trace rot and fixing it. That's what I used to fix that, in fact. So just here's a, a quick little video of uh, installing the header pins. It's a lot of people recommend to uh, put it in there with some captain tape. That's probably best practice. I don't have any. Didn't feel like ordering any, so I just held it in there with my finger, got some uh, some flux, spread it around, and kind of a, a welding technique. I just tacked down one corner, and that's going to hold it in place, and I went to work on the rest of the pins. So I used something plastic there to spread it around, get a little on the uh, tip of the soldering iron there. Quick little tap on the pin and the and the board. Boom, it's done. Or at least it's going to hold it in place for me anyway. So we'll get this sped up, get those pins soldered on, and on to the next. By the way, make sure you go and get the uh, the instructions if you're gonna buy one of these he's selling them on eBay um, but make sure you get his his instructions there's frame by frame of just kind of making sure you don't mess anything up I got to work with him a little bit oh yeah but speaking of full disclosure I did get a discount on this chip but it has that has nothing to do with my opinion of it um, just want to throw that out there for for honesty's sake But it really is kind of hard to mess up if you pay attention to what you're doing and follow the instructions as you're doing it. I did actually manage to uh, mess one thing up because I got in a hurry. I was a little tired that day too. Actually, I was trying to do stuff after work. It was a long day, blah, blah, blah. So I had to go back and uh, fix my screw up with, with a hexen disc. So here it is installed. Get the pins all done and on there and it just pushes right onto the board. And we're going to boot up into bank two, change the fan speed up to 70%. Actually wind up changing the fan speed to, on both banks, even though I wound up overwriting one of them. I've kind of messed around with these a few times, so now I'm already in the habit of as soon as I turn on a fresh flash of X Blast, I go in and bump the fan speed up. Not really in the mood to cook anything. Speaking of the fan and, and heat, that was another thing I did to this board was uh, pulled those heat sinks off and put new thermal paste underneath on both the uh, CPU and GPU. After you change settings in these, you do have to be careful to go into your power settings and reboot using the 
the menu item that saves changes. So you're going to go into power menu and reboot or power off, but make sure you're doing it with the option that saves your changes. So I'm going to run over to the computer here. I've gone into NetFlash. There's instructions on how to do that. If you don't know how to use a web browser to, to, to go and do a NetFlash, this is not the video for you. There's, there's other tutorials out there for you. Uh, it's pretty easy. It's, it's almost foolproof, honestly. I'm a bit of a computer nerd, at least I think so. Um, I really think I could accomplish this with very little computer savvy. You're just punching in an IP address on your screen and then clicking to tell it which BIOS you want to do. In fact, the BIOS is probably the trickiest part of this whole thing. There are instructions in this, uh, in his, uh, in, in Tony's on Tony's Google Drive on how to combine. 256k BIOS file to a 512. If you've already got a 512 that you like, that's fine, because each of these banks on this switchable Jafar chip is 512. So if you if you're using a 256, you are going to need to combine it using a certain program and basically build that into a, a 512 chip. So going over to your computer, then punching in your IP address selecting your BIOS and tell it to flash. I've got it sped up here. It's going to take a little longer than that, but boom, it's going to reboot. And then I freaked out. Error 13. I thought, okay, I screwed something up. And this is actually where I got um, to doing things myself instead of opening Google, like, you know, any sane human being. Look that up here. It's because I had a fresh hard drive in the box and I didn't have any uh, dashboard installed. So I burned a Heimdall's Xbox engineering disk, AKA Hexen. And I just went in there and installed a, a dashboard, rebooted, and everything was good to go. There you go, Evolution X. These are great chips. Head over to eBay and snag you one of them. I don't think you'll regret it.